to the haters that don't think porn is a real job. I mean, I can tell you what my business partner would say. He would say, well, we employ people. Do they employ anyone? Do they give, you know, like, do they bring back into the economy and blah, blah, blah. He's very, he's very gung-ho about that. But I think I'm more of a pacifist. I don't really like upsetting people. I guess at the end of the day, I don't really mind if some people don't think it's a real job because it won't stop me doing what I'm doing. And I take it as a real job and I do it very seriously. And that's enough for me. I do think there's a healthy and unhealthy way to view porn. I think porn is like any other indulgence, like chocolate or alcohol. You should have it in moderation. You should have it to a healthy standard. Some people, they watch too much of it or they get too obsessed with it and it becomes unhealthy. And that's not a porn thing. That's a human addiction vice thing. Um, and I noticed that with some people that do obsessively watch it, that do get into it, you know, they watch so much of it, they become desensitized to it in the same way that you can become immune to, well, not immune, but you know, you can become more tolerant of alcohol, so you have to consume more. And it's the same for porn, so you know, like, suddenly watching vanilla stuff doesn't get you off anymore, so you want to, like, you, you personally progressively start watching harder stuff because that's what you need because you consume so much of it. My family and I actually moved around quite a lot because of my dad's job. Um, so I think I've been to about 10 to 15 different schools around that time, which is a lot. And um, so I was very shy and very awkward and I comfort ate a lot. So I was quite a bit chubbier than I was. I think the biggest size I was went up to a size 14, which, you know, on an Asian person was very, very strange. So I've, I wasn't very good at making friends and I kind of went into that emo edgy phase and I had like the fringe and I dyed my hair. I had these really big glasses and braces and basically, you know, I didn't, I don't think I was very approachable. And then I kind of went in into myself more because no one approached me and then I'd be like, well, I don't want friends anyway. Um, and I read more books and I spent all my free time at the comic book shop. Um, I was very much a nerd geek type, but way before it was popular. I like, I'm, I'm really happy now that people love comic books and it's really cool, but it wasn't cool when I was at school and I really wished it was because I might have had friends then. <laughs> When you go through not being popular and you kind of you kind of become defensive about it, you're like, okay, well, no, I'm not gonna follow fashion trends. That's so basic, and you know, I'm not doing this because I choose to. Um, and I was working, and my housemate was like, oh, by the way, I'm on Reddit, and I, I follow some Asian forums. Do you, wanna, do you mind if I just post a picture of you? And I was like, yeah, whatever, do it. I don't care. And then he posted this picture, and it was a really terrible picture. And I got some really positive comments. They're like, oh, she's cute. And I was like, oh, someone said I was cute. And then I started posting more pictures and they got progressively more like revealing just because I was feeling very confident at the time. I was like, yeah, I'm feeling good about myself. Um, and that whole thing, you know, it made me start wanting to be better. Like I did start paying attention to my looks and I did start looking at makeup tutorials. And just in general, you know, that, that little bit of that boost in confidence really makes you want to help yourself. It's not like I wanted to change for them. It's just like I, I wasn't, I obviously wasn't happy with my looks back then. And then I was just like, you know what? It is okay to try. And I think part of me didn't want to try before because you think, oh, what if I try really hard and then I'm still not, I, I still get rejected and stuff. Um, so it went from posting pictures and just interacting with people, like replying to post comments. And then someone was just like, oh, why don't you try camming? And I was spending so much time talking to people through comments, it made sense to just talk to them through real time. And camming was so much fun. And again, confidence increased and blah, blah, blah. And people were like, oh, you should make some videos. And I was like, yeah, I could do. I've heard the argument or the complaint saying 
porn is so bad for children because children are learning about sex and relationships from porn. And I'm just thinking, if your child has to resort to watching porn and this is their only knowledge of sex and they learn sex from that, then you at some point have done something wrong. Because you should have had a conversation with your children and you should they should know what a healthy relationship both you know normal and sexual is that they can look at porn and they can realize this is fictional this isn't this isn't how real relationships are because at the same time you know your kids can watch films with explosions and killing and they don't think oh yeah that's just how people live yeah it's totally okay to just go around stabbing people they don't think that because you've taught them way before then that no murder is wrong so why 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 do you have that with porn why do you go oh kids are learning that this is normal i'm like well tell them it's not then you know they don't they don't play video games and they think you know oh yeah i'm just gonna go rob someone's car and run a bunch of people over so I started webcamming and it was really fun. It was like, there's, there's something, I mean, firstly, you can have actual conversations rather than sort of posting a comment and then waiting for a reply. Like, it's just, you know, a chat room. Um, and then I just, I really managed to sort of open up a little bit through webcam and just learn to be more confident and be just, it was, it felt like at the end of the day I could come online and I'd be talking to my friends and it was just really sweet. And you also made money from it. And that was really great. Like it's, it's, it's embarrassing to say, but I made just as much from camming in the, in a lot less time than I was working the three jobs I was at the time. So it was very, it made a lot of sense for me then to sort of go, okay, well, I'm going to quit my three jobs and just do webcamming for a bit. And I didn't really have a plan on what to do after that, but it seemed like a good way to save up money. And I thought, well, I could make a video. I, I've got nothing against that. You know, you're kind of seeing me on cam anyway. I'm kind of doing all these sort of sexy things. Um, but I didn't want to just sell it off and then not know what people did with the videos. I, you know, I, I guess I quite like the idea of having more control over it, which is why I thought I'd start a website. Um, and I had a friend at the time who sort of also was thinking along the same things. He's a tech person, um, but he was just, he just went like, oh, hey, Harriet, how about starting a porn site together? And I was like, hey, yeah, that totally works. That totally aligns with what I'm doing. And I don't think either of us thought it'd be anything big. I think we we're just like going to sort of do it for a laugh almost. And then it kind of got really popular. And I guess it just exploded from there. I mean, if you had asked me when I was coming, like, oh, do you think you're going to be running, you know, one of the UK's biggest independent porn sites? I'd be like, get out of here. So it kind of snowballed in that sense. <laughs> Here's the thing, I do porn and I shoot porn the way I like to have sex and personally I'm a very vanilla person so that's why my porn's very vanilla. I don't get off on being called a slut or a whore so I don't have that in my video but I don't do that from a sense of you know moral superiority or ethical superiority. I simply do that because it's what I like and I really respect my friends who are into BDSM or they work at Kink and they have this thing because that's what they like. And I think that's what porn should be about. You do what you like, you do what you're comfortable with, and you do what get you off. And as for bringing kids into this, right, the, the narrative there shouldn't be, oh, I'm doing this and it's great for kids to watch, because it's not, because you'll not be watching it. But it's not like, oh, my porn's better than their porn. It's very much when you grow up, there is a stage, and I think everyone goes through it, whether later or early in life, where you start discovering what you like in sex. You start discovering what your turns on are. And then porn shouldn't be a way to teach you that. Porn should just be a way that if you want to masturbate, if you want to have something, you already know what you like, or you can find out what you like and the options are there, if that makes sense. Porn isn't a guidebook. Porn isn't a way to teach people. It's more like, you know, oh, today I feel like eating sushi. There are sushi restaurants available. Oh, I feel like eating pizza. There's pizza available. It's more like that. Does that make sense? That's, that's just how I see it. So yes, the stuff I do is very, very vanilla, very intimate and very happy because that's just, that's just what I like and I only want to film what I'm comfortable with. 
you know, that I have people asking me like, why haven't you done a gangbang? I'm like, I wouldn't do that in my personal life, so I'm not going to do it on porn. And because I own and direct and produce my own stuff, I can make that choice, which I'm very happy about. There's this weird feeling that you don't want, like, I'm not sure how to say it, but before, I think I was very defensive in general. I think I made myself unapproachable, um, and I think I was just automatically quite defensive and aggressive. And it's, it's very hard to admit that, but it's what I was doing. And since, you know, becoming more confident, becoming just a little bit more um, curious and adventurous, and just sort of going, you know what, I'm going to try this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to talk to these people in real life, um, and yeah, learning to say what you want, learning to ask for what you want in all aspects of your life is such, is so amazing and it's such a good freedom and it's something you really do have to learn. And obviously it definitely improves your sexuality because being able to tell your partner like, oh, I like doing this or oh, I really want to try that, that obviously makes things better. I think a lot of people find it still very difficult to tell someone if they're not enjoying something sexually because at the same time you don't want to offend your partner um, and maybe you think, oh, what if they think of what I want to do is really weird or really freaky. So it is, it, it, there is a hurdle there that I think is really amazing if you can get over it. <laughs> Progression-wise, I'm naturally moving and learning new skills and at the moment the business side of the things is really interesting to me and really motivating and I want to focus on that. I still do the porn because I enjoy it and, you know, it's really fun. Um, but there will be a point where I'm like, nah, I don't really feel this, with this one way or another about it. And when it gets to that point, I don't think I'll do it because I don't want to do it unless it's something that I truly enjoy and get pleasure from.